there are all kinds of fears in our world. Some of them are called phobias, and there's an entire catalog of them. Phobia, fear of spiders, open spaces, closed spaces, etc., etc. Now, today I want to touch upon a very special kind of fear, which is the fear of being or which can amount to almost the same thing, being seen as old-fashioned. Sometimes it's really a big misnomer because some people who are seen as old-fashioned are actually non-fashioned. They don't care about fashion. They follow their own fashion, their own mind, their own self, their own taste. So they just don't give a shit about fashion. They're not old-fashioned. They are non-fashioned. There's a funny saying, when you turn 30, something awful happens to music. That's very funny, uh, actually. Meaning that uh, when you turn 30, then you start to dislike the current modern music of the times. And that means that you are turning old. <laughs> uh, I am in a very good situation in relation to this, because the things I dislike now, except for the things that didn't exist when I was 30 or 20, I have disliked more or less my entire life. So one could say that I've always been old-fashioned. So I'm not concerned at all about people thinking that I'm old-fashioned. I've kind of always defended olden values, olden words, olden uh, behavior and etiquette and such. So no big deal for me. But I do note that for other people and even younger people than me, this can be a problem. Now, I work as a music critic at times, writing about classical music. But I also listen to all kinds of popular music as well. And some years ago, I did an experiment. Because uh, in my 30s, I mo was more or less up to date with the current hit songs. I listened to the new pop records, etc. cetera. Um, I don't do that anymore. But sometimes I take a sample. So maybe four years ago, I looked up a collection of last year's hit songs. And I listened to somehow the, the best the best of 2014 or 13. And after that, I really wanted to go to the toilet and puke. It, it was just awful, totally awful. And I'm not uh, making this bigger than it is. I'm not trying to make a drama. It was that terrible for me. Now, I have a friend who is also a music critic, but he doesn't write about classical music, but about popular music. Really nice guy and sympathetic and thinking and intelligent. I mentioned this to him, what I had done, including my reaction. And I looked at him. He was, of course, much more up to date with the current hit songs, etc what was seen as a hit song and, and what was successful in that sphere. And I saw that he agreed with me, that he thought more or less the same as me, but he didn't agree in words. I also saw that he wasn't free from this phobia or fear of being seen as old-fashioned. My guess is that he couldn't risk with his big audience of younger readers and not being in the classical field where it's much more okay to be reactionary or really uh, old-fashioned in, in, a, in a dark way. No, he wouldn't risk that. So I saw in his body language that he agreed, but he couldn't say that to me because there was this 
sneaky, this strange kind of fear. Now let me give a counterexample of this fear. An example of fearlessness from one of the great figures of popular culture in this moment, I mean film, and that's Federico Fellini. He was once asked in an interview, what's your relation with the youngsters, with the teenagers? And his reply was, I don't know where they are, I don't know what they are up to, and I don't know how it happened that the keys to the city were somehow passed over to teenagers who were hardly dry behind their ears. It must have been a fantastic sense of impotence, impotence uh, from the adult generation to think that all the answers, all the solutions resided in the teenagers, in the young. Now, that's no fear of being old-fashioned. That's, that's being non-fashioned, I would say. Hats off for Fellini. A very wise man in my book. And obviously this question is about generations and also about the generation gap. But hey, What's a generation gap? And does it exist by itself or are we maybe creating it with this fear? Because a gap means that there's a big distance between us. But that comes partly from our inability or our fear of saying what we adults think. I mean, when I was a teenager, I wouldn't have wanted the grown-ups to agree with everything that I was thinking. I was curious about their viewpoints coming from a longer life, more experience, more harsh experience than I ever had. And uh, I would have been mighty disappointed if people had told me, older people had told me that, well, you know, it's you who had the answers. You are the hope of the future. I never saw myself as the hope of the future. Now, actually, I sometimes do. Uh, but that's not because I'm a teenager. That's because I'm not a teenager. And because I'm a somewhat courageous individual who dare to stand for my old-fashioned views, which I have kept all my life, actually. Uh, so... It's an absurd situation. Now, I'm not talking about rearing children and parenting because, yes, of course, many stupidities and cruelties are committed in the name of me, the adult, telling you, the child, how you should act and how things are and what is the truth about things. That's not what I'm talking about. We can forget child rearing for the moment and let's just talk about adults being honest to themselves and daring to speak out and say that, excuse me, I think this is awful. And I don't care if you call me old-fashioned or what other nice or awful name you have for this of not liking the modern things. You and I know that communication is one of the big slogans, one of the big catchwords of our times. One of the, what I call, saliva-producing thought surrogates, even. And if we forget that a very important part of communication, not least between the generations, is telling it as it is, then, sure, there will be a gap. And that gap will be there because we, the adults, are not expressing our views out of fear of being stamped as old-fashioned. So, of course, there will be a big distance filled with our silence, our biting our lips and, oh, I almost said something stupid, but I caught myself in time. No, that creates a gap.
and it creates non-communication and um, it creates, I'm sure, young people and teenagers who are very disappointed with us as well because they, they see that we don't like it. But they also see that we dare not speak our minds. They are disappointed with us and for a good reason. As I would have been disappointed when I was a teenager if grown-ups had told me, you know, you have all the answers. Huh. Yeah, sure. Fear, I didn't mention, the fear of oneself. That's a kind of a noble fear. Because if you have given time to introspection, then you see that, yes, we have things in ourselves, in our own mental and psychic makeup that are that deserve to be afraid of being seen as old-fashioned is nil it's nothing compared with our own inner demons and dangers thank you